Well, at least there wasn't any stoner jokes. Scoob is the latest entry in the Scooby-Doo franchise, this time deciding to take the Mystery Gang in a 3D animated form. We follow Shaggy, Scooby, Fred, Velma, Daphne on an adventure where they'll find out how important Scooby is to an old prophecy. And that's all pretty much it without giving any spoilers to you guys. This is a spoiler-free review. If you want to check out my spoiler review, I'll be doing it on the podcast channel, Film Strippers. Finally happy to have a brand new movie to talk some spoilers over there. I also went ahead and even recorded my Myself and my lady watching the first half of this Scoob movie in the same way I recorded us watching the Sonic movie. So look out for that coming out later this weekend. It's a Scooby-tastic time here on this channel. But was this movie Scooby-tastic? Why not? Alright, I'm gonna get to the stuff I really enjoyed about this movie. The first, like, 10-15 minutes, they got you, man. They know Scooby-Doo fans. It's probably cheating when you have a puppy Scooby-Doo and a Shaggy meeting of the first time, seeing the mystery gang get together, solve a small little mystery. Heck, they even go ahead and recreate the opening for the Scooby-Doo animated show, and that gave me goosebumps all on its own. Even though at first, when they announced the voice cast for this Scooby-Doo animated movie, I thought, uh, they do not seem to fit Zac Efron. Efron, Gina Rodriguez. I was really worried they weren't going to feel like the Scooby-Doo characters that they are, but in the actual film, they portray the characters very well. They get all their mannerisms down, the characteristics that make them who they are, and when they do get to interact with each other, you think to yourself, yep, this is the mystery gang I enjoy. There's also something to be appreciated here that this movie decided to take Hanna-Barbera characters and pile them on into this universe with a Blue Falcon character voiced by Mark Wahlberg, also with Dino Mutt, two of my favorites when I was growing up and so many other ones that will pop up as the movie goes on. Also touching on the fact that they decided to go 3D animated with this movie this time around I thought was a cool idea. I would have definitely have liked to have seen more live action interpretations of these characters but the beautiful 3D animation in this movie gave new life to these characters in a different way that you just couldn't do in live action that maybe comes off a little goofy or weird with these color coordinated characters solving mysteries. And while I want to make it very clear clear this movie will definitely please children. If you have kids who are even remotely interested in Scooby-Doo, they're gonna like this movie. They're gonna have a tons of fun with it. But being that I'm an older audience member, a longtime Scooby-Doo fan, there were some slight disappointments in this movie. One, it's just this movie does not feel Scooby-Doo to me. Like I was saying, the first 15, 20 minutes of this film where the gang is getting together, Shaggy and Scooby are meeting, they're solving a small little mystery. I'm like, yo, this is fantastic. I really like the direction, the style. I want to see more of this. And then you start bringing in robots, UFOs, characters that just don't really belong together having conversations with Scooby-Doo and the gang where they're not really even solving a mystery. Not to mention for a good chunk of this movie, the gang is completely split up so you don't even get to see these characters you love hang out together and do the things they like. It kind of retreads a lot of what we've already seen in Scooby-Doo movies, especially that trope of Shaggy and Scooby having to prove their worth in this mystery gang. It's obviously no secret that everyone wonders well, what is the importance that Shaggy and Scooby bring to the gang other than being basically the mascots for us audience members to love? They did this, I think, twice now in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies where they have to prove themselves worthy of the team, that they're not the mess-ups, that they can solve mysteries too on their own. But other than it not even feeling like Scooby-Doo, the pacing is super off in this movie. It's a pretty short film running about an hour and 30 minutes, and they just go at a rapid rate here where you don't even get some breathing room. Just things are unfolding so fast where it feels kind of rushed. Adding on on top of that, something that I hate that is happening with modern animation, when you bring classic characters, whether it's the Addams Family or the Scooby-Doo characters, you also throw in these heavy-handed pop culture references. And I'm not even talking about celebrities. At one point, Fred gets called a poor man's Hemsworth. I thought that was actually a really good joke. But a crucial the crucial plot in this movie is that they find Shaggy and Scooby were kidnapped because Velma made a Tinder connection. The use of social media, just stuff that continues to take you out of the world of Scooby-Doo. I'm obviously nitpicking just so much right now because I just love these characters I grew up with and I guess I see them in a certain light to see them do something different 
kind of makes me go, whoa, what are you doing? This is definitely the Scooby-Doo that is being updated for a new generation. Heck, by the end of the movie, they hella try to update this mystery team. I may just be a boomer looking at this too hard and wanting my old classic Scooby-Doo, because the film isn't garbage. It's honestly just on par with the rest of the Scooby-Doo movies that went to theaters. Heck, even some of the direct-to-DVD ones. Kids are going to find enjoyment out of this, but I'll be shocked if this gets a sequel and they continue this Hanna-Barbera universe that feels a little forced. For Scoob, I'm gonna give action three stars. The visuals were pretty impressive. I like the animated look. It just does not feel Scooby-Doo-ish in terms of the big battle at the end of this film. Comedy in the movie, I'm gonna give it two stars. There was a lot of humor I did enjoy and made me giggle, but there were several times where the humor just sort of felt flat to me. Drama in the movie, I'm gonna give it two stars. This just feels like a recycled version of a lot of the Scooby-Doo stories that we've seen on the big screen with the forced nature of the Hanna-Barbera universe that I just don't feel fits with this Scooby aesthetic. Horror in the movie, I'm gonna give it zero stars too. There's really nothing scary to be done here in the Scooby-Doo movie. Suspense the film, I'm gonna give it two stars. This is a super predictable Scooby-Doo movie. You kind of see where all the twists and turns are headed. Casual fans, I'm gonna give it a B minus. Cinephiles, I'm gonna give it a C plus. And critically, I'm going to give it a C minus. For Scoob, I know my rating system probably doesn't work in times of the Rona, but I think if you have a child at home and they need something to do in times of quarantine, this is definitely worth a rent. That'll do, Donkey. That'll do. I can't believe it's that hard to get Scooby-Doo right when we've had so many amazing animated movies. But maybe there'll be people out there who enjoy it much more than me. I definitely want to hear your guys' opinion. If you saw Scoob, chat with me down below. Also be looking out for my reaction video where I watched the first half of Scooby-Doo. And you can see my reaction for witnessing this movie for the first time. Also don't forget about the spoiler review on the Film Strippers channel. Be sure to like and subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at 3CFilmReview. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.